confidants. Welcome back to another episode of Confidently Insecure. The, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, <laughs> oh my God, I've had two coffees. The podcast where we are absolutely sure we don't know everything. And this is a fun one, you guys. This one is actually one that I'm like not nervous about. I'm walking in with a happy, good attitude. There's no like trauma attached to it. I'm really jazzed because I have one of my favorite TikTokers. Yes, I said TikTokers. If you're a confidant, you know that I have been talking about nothing but TikTok every episode here and there somewhere. Uh, it, it, my guest this week, his name is David. He's known as Fotivational Speaker on TikTok. <laughs> David, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for agreeing to do this. Thank you for having me. I'm very, very excited <laughs> and also slightly terrified because I did zero research so as not to taint myself. Oh, that's I good. Have this be a very, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, that's actually really good because I feel like sometimes people get a little scared if they watch episodes p- prior. One, because, yeah, this shit does get kind of like real here and the whole point of this podcast though was to ask the questions people are too afraid to but with the Mm. understanding that like we're all human and and trying to do our best and this is like a knowledge-based podcast right and obviously like I'm a cis white female I don't know a lot of shit and I should be asking questions (laughs) so I am the uh the catalyst for that but uh I want to start with First of all, I love your fucking TikTok. Did you ever imagine in your wildest dreams that you were going to become such a big deal for motivational speaking on TikTok? (laughs) Uh, I don't know about the big deal thing. I I just, I, I, you know, TikTok, I had no idea about TikTok like most people. Um, My fiance had... Got on TikTok. She's in advertising. So she got on TikTok ah. really early because yeah. it's a job. Um, and she's like, oh, and she was just showing me mostly lip sync stuff like years ago. And right. I was like, oh, yeah, all right, cool. But when quarantine came, uh, it was just like, like everybody else, I was like, well, let's see what TikTok is. Yep. That so, was l- literally the same. I was like, musically is so stupid. It's children dancing. I have yeah. n- no, no relation to that. And then. <laughs> It turned into a whole other beast, I think, in the last year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, do you, do you, like, are you a, a motivational speaker? Like, are, is that your job? Like, are you a therapist? No, 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 no. Uh, I am not. I'm, I'm an, I guess, a, it's so, so weird to say actor by trade, but I'm an actor. Yeah. Um, and all of this stuff that's on my TikTok just sort of, was a natural occurrence um, over the last few years mm. um, just due to my spiritual journey. And, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm technically a certified spiritual life coach, but, like... <gasps> what? Technically, but, like, I'm not... It's not something I'm pursuing or very curious about just yet, but I, I really got it, uh, the the certification, so that I, to protect myself, to be like, hey, Ooh, like... Oh, yeah. Here you go, like, because I know people feel a certain type of way about sure. certain things. So, well, mental health talk, as we call it, is mm-hmm. like you you get it, it feels like it's black and white. And I don't like that where it's like it's one thing where you're getting doctors and psychiatrists who are talking professionally. And then you get people like me who are like, this is just what I've been through. So here it is. And then like you represent this beautiful gray area of being like a coach who's also been through it, who gives out this advice that feels so professional. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, you know what? I, 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 I try to, I say this on a lot of the lives I do. I really do kind of sort of stay away from the advice game, mostly because uh, for me, I, I do just say like, I'm, this is all from my experience. I'm literally, mm. um, I have a, someone who like I had to sort of block today. Um, it's a weird, it's a weird space that I'm still navigating, but um, because uh you know, that he was, he's very sort of into this idea of this sort of objective, like, this is the thing. Mm. This is the objective rule thing, whatever. And he was kind of jumping to my comment section. And it was on, like, one of my more talky back and forth videos. And Uh I'm like, this isn't 
really about that. And I know a lot of them seem very much like, oh, like this is him giving me advice. And it's mm. like, I would prefer people to kind of see them as like, this is a diary entry. Wow. This is, this is just my experience. If it resonates with you, it's because I'm basic. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Drag yourself 2020. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, I'm not, uh, so I, I do stay away from that. And, and I find that the, the, the handle even, motivational speaker, mm. is a nod to something that I, I know from a kind of a dialectic, spiritual, weird state, but something that one of my teachers always says is like the opposite of everything I say is true. Whoa. And I take that very seriously because it's like I'm, there's, there is a certain point, I believe, in everybody's spiritual journey where you can, I can, I know personally, I can make a compelling argument for any side. Okay. And one, once I kind of hit that, I once had to be, I, one, I had to be very mindful of what I was doing, but two, I, I just had to be okay with being wrong about a lot, mm. a lot of stuff. Ooh. And uh, that, that's humbling. That, that opens up that opens me up to be able to share experiences with myself, with other people and stuff, because it's like, I'm not telling you that this is the way this isn't the right. thing. Right. Uh, and you know and your, I mean? your TikToks do a really good job of that. I want to play just like one or two of my favorites because for the confidants who aren't on TikTok, which like, what are you doing? Get on there. <laughs> um, or don't like save yourself many hours of uh, mindlessly scrolling. Or, you know what? I'm arguing with myself at this point. I will stand by that TikTok has taught me more about life than fucking school ever did. Um, on David's page, you do this beautiful thing where you do this back and forth of talking to yourself as characters, right? So you've got sort of the motivational speaker on one side and then like you, aka like what we all, like it me character on the other side. So I just want to play like a couple of these um, that I really like. Okay, let's see. The emergency. I'm pretty sure I'm a piece of shit. You feel like you're taking on a lot? It's probably a healthier description. See song between an intuitive state of what you want to be doing and a reactionary state of other people's expectations of you? Yes. And spinning all those plates as you identifying with oscillating states of anxiety, panic, and depression? Yeah. What do I do? Take a deep breath. What would you tell yourself right now? Oh, so we're all avoiding our responsibilities today? Do it. Fine. I'd say... Notice the areas in your life where you're adding meaning and it'll help you not turn every event into a crisis. Good. And as I grow and change, the boundaries need to grow and change as well. And setting new ones doesn't mean I'm a bad person. There we go. And journaling and writing down goals can help me process any disempowering thoughts as well as identifying if what I'm doing is mine or somebody else's. While it's okay to be spinning a lot of plates, it's important to know only I know what plate needs to be spinning right now and to trust that and to trust myself. Okay, so that's just like one, right? And sort of like um, the format that you do is this quick back and forth, right? So mm -hmm. you're correcting yourself. You're sort of like Jiminy Cricketing. You're holding up a mirror to yourself. And the shit that comes out of your mouth. <laughs> First of all, like production-wise, how the fuck do you script these out? Or like, do you script these out? Tell me your process. Oh, my gosh. Uh, yeah, I have to I write a script. Um, and it's usually kind of insane. I, I, I recently saw a, a TikTok with this girl who did, it blew my mind. She's like 10 characters at one time or something. And I was just like, this is insane. And my fiance is like, you can't do that. And I'm like, why? <laughs> She's like, cause you'll drive me crazy. Like you can't, you can't do that. So our, <laughs> the process for me is, I mean, it's, I could probably streamline it, but it's just, I, um, have an idea write the script, tweak, 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 and then just I'll film one way. And because I am the actor improviser in me, sometimes it'll get, it'll get out of hand and I'll be yeah. like, ah, oh, like this is funny. And I'm like, shit, I got to re I got to re-record the yeah. entire thing uh -huh. and go back and back. And usually like most things, I guess it, it, I discover things in editing that I was like, oh man, I, that's that's way more interesting than I initially mm. meant it to be. But yeah, mm. it's. Uh, I tried to make a, a bit of a challenge for myself to try to do you know one a week because they wow. are a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh. So and uh, you know it, it tends to work out. So we'll see. How, yeah, it tends to work out just a little bit, like hundreds of thousands of views. But how <laughs> did you learn how to talk so fast? Because you have sixty seconds. You're giving mm. us a dose of like a therapy session, essentially. In the and you kind of like cut through the bullshit. Like it's kind of like 
people go to therapy and they realize that like most therapists aren't going to give you answers. They want you to just like kind of figure it out and be again, like a mirror to yourself. And like, that's what a good therapist should do. But sometimes I'm like, just tell me what the fuck I'm supposed to come up with. Like, what's the conclusion <laughs> here? And I feel like your TikToks do that. You, you know, even just like the thing you said about boundaries that like, as you grow, your boundaries are going to change. And I feel like that's such a small but powerful statement. And I'm all about like taking away just those little tidbits that I can regurgitate back to people. And I feel like that's like your whole entire like shtick. So I guess, A, how do you talk so fast? And B, when, you, when you're when you coming up with like your script and your content, is it really just kind of like reflective of something that you're going through? Uh, so... I talk so fast because I, I just talk fast. The reason uh, I, in acting and like theater and stuff, TV, film, can't speak that fast. I can't go no. that shit crazy. Just no. blah, 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 blah. like I've had casting directors, acting coaches, directors be like, yo, man, you got to slow down. Slow down. Unless you're uh, like Dear Evan Hansen. I don't know if you're a musical theater nerd, but. <laughs> I haven't seen that yet, but I really <laughs> want to. He talks very <laughs> fast, but like that's I'm like oh that would be my dream role is just like, blah, 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 blah. right? But yeah, slowing down is like silence is powerful when I'm acting, but not in TikTok. <laughs> right. So I guess part of I guess TikTok, and I'm sure you, you can attest to this, is it's a very like lean into like your thing, mm -hmm. and I've always spoke like I think I I, I I've been speaking for a long long time. Uh, my mom was like she. She, she claims she was, like, doing some kind of weird baby Einstein thing. But she's like, you were talking before everybody else. Like, Aww. full sentences. And I was like, all right. But I do speak at a pace um, that is a little insane. So yeah. I was like, what if I lean into that fully? And it was just, it's fun for me. Yeah. Like, I, I can only imagine how many takes you do. Like, do you bite your tongue and, like, <laughs> fumble your words? Because that's... So many. So many wow. takes. I have a... a one uh, a voice teacher told me one of my acting teachers to give me this cork that I do a cork exercise to kind of loosen the jaw ah. and all kinds of little things. It's like this big wine cork, and I'll say the lines and try to be as articulate as possible with the cork in my mouth, so that when I'm actually doing it, it it can come out a little smoother. But there are some days where I'm trying to force it, and then like we're at home, so my fiance she's at work yeah. right there, and I'm like, babe, can you just? <laughs> I gotta it's like a check. Process. It's a process, babe. Chill. Uh, I need my, my creative space. You know? Uh, but, I mean, honestly, um, as far as where they come from, yeah, they do come from a lot of the time stuff that I'm, I am going through, but mostly it's stuff that I've kind of gone through. Mm. Um, uh, and something will come up and remind me to get back to myself, and I'll go, oh, yeah, mm. this is exactly like this one thing. And a lot of the... I guess it's going through and gone through because a lot of it is just, it, it'll come back. Right. Like the way that I commu communicate, yeah, with my fiance, yeah. I'll be like, oh, yeah, that's, you're doing that thing that you know, we know that's not helpful. Stop doing that. Like, I have to ask, what's your sign? Um, I, I get asked this so much. I'm like, I'm ready. Uh, a Capricorn sun, Taurus moon, Scorpio huh? rising. Whoa. Okay. That's good. So you're hardworking and uh, like, in, like, passionate which is good and yeah. i feel like your your tiktoks represent that where you know like the other one i love is is the like couples therapy one where you talk <laughs> like how people just talk but then you know like your jiminy cricket voice chimes in and kind of teaches you not to go off of your first thought right like my therapist always says like first thought is the worst thought what matters is what your second thought is, right? Like I can oh, have I all the, yeah, right. Like the first intrusive thoughts, like just have that. That's human. That's like instinct, that's survival. And then the second thoughts that come up are like, okay, now here's like caveman brain is gone. Here's like rational side. And, and I love that both of your characters play that. So like getting a little bit away from the production creation side of it, because we're both creators and like obsessed. Let's talk a little bit about spiritual journey because I, I write a little bit th about this in my book, which I'm definitely going to send you one, by the way. It's a Please mental do. health workbook. But uh, I talk about how, like, Western culture really gentrified the idea of spirituality. And, like, I know we can't blame Madonna for everything, but, like, I just remember it starting with her talking about, like, Kabbalah. 
ism or whatever. Yeah. And Kamala. then like, yeah, like Gwyneth Paltrow jumped on the train. And, and while I do believe probably a lot of these people have real honest connections to their spiritual pathways, like you can't but help eye roll a little bit when it's like now they're selling yoga mats with like their fucking face on it or whatever. And so I guess like, what does a spiritual journey mean to you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's <that's>, start there. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a lot. Um, <sighs> um, let's think. <laughs> I don't know. Let's, there's a, there's a lot there. There, as far as, I think you and I, cause you're in LA, like you're mm-hmm. in the West coast. We have yeah. a unique, a unique experience with this idea of spirituality so i think that lends itself to some stuff but as far as the spiritual journey um goes i think it's just a normal journey first and foremost i think this uh something that and i'm referencing the hell out of her today jesus she's gonna love this uh (laughs) something that my fiance likes to remind me of is uh was something that somebody said in one of my lives which is like when did you become aware that you were on a spiritual journey Whoa, yeah, that's what I want my question to be. <laughs> right, like when did you become aware of that, which was, which is interesting because it's like, um, we're, it, it stretches it out to the, to the idea of there, there is certain kind of sort of big milestones in your spiritual right. journey where you look back and you go, whoa, it, it's mm-hmm. always been this. It's mm-hmm. always been leading to this moment, mm-hmm. these moments. Totally. Um, and so noticing that uh, for me, is really helpful in opening it up to everybody mm. and, and knowing that everybody's going through this. I think there's a, there's the temptation that we all have. Uh, I think it comes from sort of an over identification with form and the, the knowing ourselves only in relation to things outside of us. Ooh. Um, that, uh, the idea that, uh, you know, spirituality is something to be gotten and it's mine yes. and I, and yes. I have it and it's something yes. to do. Um, right. and, uh, I love, you know, all of the, the, the badass dudes that I, and ladies that I rock with, um, all talk about it as a homecoming and it's something that I've experienced mm. in my life. And it's like, it's more of a stripping away mm. of this sort of coming back to yourself. I, I think mm. I have this old video where I'm like, you're already a lot of uh, people, especially on the West Coast, it's it's the seeker mentality, right? Right. It's like I, I was got just it. gonna say the fucking secret. I feel like ruined and brought <laughs> forth so much. Right. About it's like, like, gosh, what you said about spirituality is so true. It's something to be had and gotten, and like that's kind of what I mean about the gentrification of the idea of like having mm-hmm. spirituality is like, uh, you either think of like religion which I totally did grow up like in a southern baptist church and understand like that kind of spirituality and then I think of like eastern indian like um hindu or buddhist like you think of oh wait no this is like super cultural that like Mm -hmm. I am now being woke to and yeah I uh... don't think that's true like (laughs) what you said is so beautiful because it's like you're on a spiritual journey your whole life, whether or not you're aware of it. Is that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that true? yeah, yeah. I think so, and I, I, well, I think it's just sort of the nature of just. You're gonna get weird. Uh, yeah, the let's nature, get weird. the <laughs> nature of sort of consciousness um, mm. as it progresses. It's sort of. Uh, I think I, I. Last month I hit up Sadhguru's book, and he has a really great way of looking at it which is just it's like a natural sort of longing for this expansive knowingness of as yourself as sort of everything and we're all sort of kind of going on this journey um but i I think to your point though one of the things that i like to do on my page and i have other videos with like where i reference pop culture Mm -hmm. uh i talk about drake and like anime and Mm -hmm. stuff and I think that's important because I want to just bring all those weird mystical concepts and make them, it ain't that serious. Like yeah. I, I, uh, I joke on like one of my, li- like my lives. Cause it's, it was, it's a really, it's a real turning point when, when I think you understand that you can make a spiritual system out of just about anything. Wow. Like you can sit, like, we could sit here and I could be like, oh man, let me tell you about this microphone. Oh, uh, like we can. <laughs> And I can do a whole write a book, t- 
tell you, it's all about the micro. It's coffee, just coffee micro. Yeah, it's, it, I could do a whole thing about that. It's not about the stuff. Mm. It's about you. It's about mm. what you like coming back to yourself and whatever that is for you. Mazel, like. Cool. But like, okay, I'm so on board with everything you're saying. And I also don't know what the fuck some of it is in the sense that, like... Copy. <laughs> no, like, uh, that's how I can tell you're a production person, because you say copy and I say copy for everything. It, uh, for confidence, it just means, like, got it. I understand. Or, like, I heard you. Um, my boyfriend listens to all the, like, mind hacking, biohacking, like... Um, oh, God, who's the name of all the, the guys? All the podcasts he listened to where it's, like, expanding consciousness like we are all one with the world and mm-hmm. for a long time it really freaked me the fuck out because it just made my anxiety spike i don't know why mm-hmm. but like i think that idea of collective consciousness we are all one again like it sounded so to be that you had to like move down by the river in a van and like be a hippie who smokes weed and like I could not equate that with the, like, boss bitch lifestyle that I lived with. Now, of course, like, as pop culture has expanded, we see people who are, like, CEOs who are, like, no, I meditate every day. And people are, like, oh, okay, there's something to this, like, connection that anyone could do it. It doesn't feel so um, stereotypical anymore. Mm. But I think what you touched on was the idea of, like, coming back to yourself. What if you don't like yourself or, like, who you've been? That's interesting. Like that's that's exciting. Um, it is exciting. It's a little messy, right? <laughs> right. No, and 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 like and, th- and this is it. Like so many, I feel of. It's such an interesting thing because. In order to not like yourself, right? Mm-hmm. We, it requires, a separation, from what is happening right now. Go on. Right? Like right now, David and Kelsey are having a conversation. Uh-huh. That's all that's happening. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're not thinking about the time you did that stupid thing in middle school where you thought Britney right. Spears was a shit and you just, you did, <laughs> it didn't work True. for you. Like you're not thinking about that. We're just yeah. having a literal conversation. Right. In this moment. In the present. In this present moment. So so much of the techniques and the stuff and the whatever is really for me about it's it's uh an opportunity to just be here right it doesn't now and and this is the tricky thing because people go well like you know i did some dumb stuff like i did some dumb shit back then we gotta talk about that yeah we're gonna get to that right but becoming i don't want to say skilled but maybe skilled yeah. Having fun with being here allows me to go. It, it immediately begins to recontextualize all of that old shit, right. right? And now, you know, one of the trendy spiritual words that I'm not the biggest fan of is uh, shadow work. And it's this yeah. idea that you're, you know, dealing with your unconscious shadow and right. parts of yourself that you don't like. Right. And you're sort of transmuting that into light. And uh, I'm not a huge fan of that. But for the purposes of just explaining this, yeah. I think when once you coming into being, being here, mm-hmm. your most truthful, authentic self. Well, now when I look back on the parts of me that I was like, oh, this is terrible. Like, I think it for me, it happened over a long period, long period of time. But I was allowed to become curious. And I think so important getting Becoming non-judgmentally curious as to everything that you are mm. allows you to see and understand, uh, perhaps maybe from a dialectically dialectic perspective, that there are going to be really helpful parts of you and really mm. harmful parts in everything that you do. Mm-hmm. Nothing's ever going to be completely one thing. Uh, that especially would, it's that impossible. It's like, impossible to just be yeah. like, oh, like I got this is the I'm right only answer. Bad. Yeah. I'm only bad. I'm only good. It was uh, the 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 finale of The Good Place. It's not a spoiler, but Chidi <laughs> writes himself this letter, and he's like, "Yo, man, like, there's no right answer." Uh. And that's challenging for people. But I think once coming into now and dealing with what's happening right now, and then also accepting the fact that like it's gonna be what it's gonna be, 
now I can become curious about like, oh, this thing that I did back then. Yeah, there were, uh, there was some shitty things. Maybe I should give that person a call. Maybe apologize mm-hmm. if that resonates with me right now. Mm-hmm. But there was also, it's also what led me to write now. Did you watch, uh, what is that fucking TV show? It's the, that we can't have sex show on Netflix. Oh it yeah. Was like um, that. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Ma- the mar- the one where they get married. They, or no, no, no. Right, the one where so there are a bunch of hot people on the island. Yeah. Wait, no. And I'm, they I'm can't actually fuck? actually no. I'm thinking about Love Is Blind. I'm thinking about Love the other blind. one. I'm I thinking did about watch Love that. Is Blind. I love that one. <laughs> Love Is Blind. Literally, I was so. The reason that show I feel like worked is because they found ge- sort of genuine people who were genuinely kind of looking at being the best version of themselves. And that yeah. one girl who everybody ended up Hated. hating, right? Yep. She was actually a friend of one of my friends, which was oh, no. a bar. I was like, wait, this is hilarious. But the one girl, I, I thought she was so amazing because she came back to that um, that that little panel, that after show thing. Oh, and yeah. And the thing that you could Ooh. tell she was doing was like, she was like, yo, look, do you, like, do you, do you and y'all regret anything? And everybody just kind of looked at her and she's like. At her. Right? But she's like, No. It led me to this, right? I wouldn't have known. <laughs> I yeah. would have had no clue if I didn't it watch that. It was a reflection. That. It was right? such a reflection. I and thought not that everyone, was great. I thought it was great too. And can I ask, like, I guess I'm thinking about that, like, instance and, like, some shit on, like, on a personal level of, like, if you have done wrong or like if you have been a shitty person and you could be like, well, it led me to be who I am today. I know where you're going. It, right? It's like, yeah, yeah but yeah. you were a dick. Like you yeah. did that person wrong or like, you know, I try to not live with regrets, but of course there's things that like I would love to call an ex up for and be like, I'm sorry. That ex just probably doesn't want to hear from me. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's more of like releasing my own guilt. So I guess like, is there a way of releasing self Guilt, and I'm trying to separate that from shame, really mm. like guilt without involving other people, right? Like, mm. it's really easy to be hard on yourself. I think mm-hmm. a lot of us are born with that monologue of, of, well, being I don't know mean if we're, yourself. I don't know if we're born with it. I, we I learn would, it. I would we, say that's we are shaped, <laughs> right? Yeah, like we're shaped by that. It's like really easy to be mean to yourself. Mm. And I guess, is there a way to, hit that spiritual journey of really wanting to learn how to be that present person without like completely neglecting maybe um, parts of you that feel shameful or uh, that have a lot of guilt attached to it. That was such a loaded, convoluted question. No, (laughs) it's, it's great. I think it's something that a lot of people, so I know I definitely like, kind of struggled with that um and uh it's the sort of idea of uh something that people it's a term called spiritual bypass this idea that like oh i can just um spiritual oh, bypass i love it, that like you can just like oh like everything's love and light now like you you've seen it it's like everything yeah. i don't know but good vibes only y'all like Ugh, like i went to <laughs> thailand once yeah and now i only peace and you're yeah. like Sarah, you you're, you're not, you're <laughs> not, you're not nice right now. <laughs> you're still really mean. Yeah. Uh, it feels inauthentic, right? Yeah. But it, honestly, it's a, there's a, oh man, that's, can't reference that. But there's, it's a, it's a natural part of the process, right? Mm. Of, um, there's a really great book by this guy, uh, Chugai, I'm gonna, mm, it's called Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism. Ooh. And I can't say his name well, and I should just Google it, but I'm lazy. His you name is Ch- Chagayam Trungpa. That's not how you say his name. Got but it? it's called Cutting Through Spiritual Materialism. And he talks about this stage and where you're mm. sort of amassing a bunch of junk and it hasn't really settled into you and you're still going to your spirituality to fix things. Um, but back to your question. Uh, as far as not neglecting sort of the... the, the, the um, essentially... The idea of people want to be like, oh, like I'm absolving myself of any wrongdoing. Like, I, that's not me. That's not me anymore. Something I found in, in my life is that, like, yo, first, if it's something that you just, you, you feel compelled to just be like, hey, uh, I don't, this, this didn't sit well with me. I just feel like I want to, you know, apologize, whatever, involve you. I think by all means do that. But 
if it as far as it being just about you mm-hmm. and letting go of that guilt mm-hmm. I found for me I don't know if guilt is necessarily a something that's helpful mm. um and I mean that I know that's that's weird because it's like there are certain evolutionary things that like I think a lot of the time that guilt is put into children because right. they think that it's going to keep them alive cuz kids right. are dumb yeah. like don't go in the street. Don't put that in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> um, but you can't feel guilty and be working on the, like the betterment of yourself mm. at the same time. Mm. That's a challenge. Like you, mm. you, you can't, your mind actually physi- physiologically cannot multitask. We've, that's mm. like a scientific right. thing. Now. I know. So bummed. Right. Uh, I thought it was like the one thing women were better at than men. And then it was like, nope. No, you're still better at, you have more connected, <laughs> connected issues. It's okay. Good. But, uh, (laughs) but yeah, I I think for me, um, look, I think it's cool to, if you do have this like little pinch of like, oh, like, oh, maybe that didn't feel good. I didn't Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Become curious, right? I immediately go, all right, so what's the deal here? Where am I? Why am I feeling like this isn't working Mm -hmm. for me? And Mm -hmm. in the process of working through that and working, doing those things, I'm, there's not a problem to fix, but I'm looking to essentially fix the problem. I'm looking right. to to better myself for now and in the future. And in doing so, it's like I can't – feeling guilty is a conceptualization that's going to hold me back from myself. Oh, yes. Yes. All right? I don't need to feel guilty to fix it. Do you want – actually, I definitely made a video about this, but it's like – wouldn't you rather me just just get on fixing it? Because people, I think we have this like projection of guilt. It's like, mm-hmm. yo, man, you did this thing. Feel yeah. guilty. Yeah. Like, don't do that. Feel guilty. And you're like, all right, but do you want me to just fix it? We can just fix that. And I won't do that again. And I can apologize and we can do all that. Yeah, but like you got to feel guilty for this long first. Yeah. This long now. Yeah. Like for whatever you subjectively feel mm. good is for me to feel guilty about. It's Ooh, like what's- punishment. Yeah. It's that, ooh, what's his name? Uh, Orville, the Orville show with, uh, it's like this Star Trek show that the family guy mm. guy no, does. Not me, not me, not me. <laughs> Wrong audience, Harry Potter only. Oh, I love Harry Potter. Um, okay, he, okay, but, but he, he does this episode where the people, uh, and it kind of leads into council culture, but like in, everybody's on a sort of a system of like, if somebody sees you doing something wrong, every person in this like, theoretical society has to go on this apology tour Mm -hmm. and if the society votes that you didn't look contrite enough you didn't it's like that's it they like lobotomize you or whatever in this thing yeah and i think we all it's sort of a mass reflection of like guilt and i find that self-forgiveness will reflect like I think America kind of needs to forgive itself first right. and foremost because <laughs> we've taken some L's, right? <laughs> deep. Well, I think you touch on something so brilliant. And before I ask this next question, we're going to throw it to a break real quick. Oh, dear sweet confidence. Do you finally feel like you could take just a little bit deeper of a breath? Now that we have gotten through this election season, or do you feel like maybe not at all because now we're coming up with the holidays? Well, listen, if you're feeling stressed or anxious, you know what I'm here to tell you about forever and always. Better help, baby. Better help is a therapy app that matches you with counselors. It's affordable. And, you know, traditional counseling wasn't really for me. I didn't realize uh, online counseling was exactly what I needed to feel comfortable. And the best part is financial aid is available. I know therapy is a privilege. We acknowledge that. But, hey, maybe you could get this as a gift for someone this holiday season. Wouldn't that be great? It's a private and safe online environment. And you can start communicating with your therapist in under 20 for hours. So many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. I want you to start living your happier life today. And as a listener, you're going to get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash CI for confidently insecure. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash C I. 
back to the show. Oh. And we're back from that break. Uh, I wanted to bring up the idea of trauma associated with leading to a spiritual journey. Mm. Because I think what I've seen a lot of is something really traumatic happens to someone, either something that was repressed and they come to, to, to terms with or something that happens later in their life. And then you see them kind of pendulum swing all the way to the other side of like yeah. that, uh, like the only way I'm going to fix this trauma is to get very, very spiritual <laughs> and like be mad at it, like throw plates, but forgiveness, right? Like forgiveness, mm -hmm. forgiveness, forgiveness. And I'm kind of like, some people don't deserve to be forgiven. I don't know. Like, can you <laughs> talk maybe a little bit about like trauma leading to such a cult? I don't want to say a culture because it's not a culture, but like trauma leading to such an experience. Yeah. Uh, I want to, can I talk about forgiveness real quick? Please. First? So the forgiveness thing, I love, I love uh, the idea of forgiveness being personal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's this like, <laughs> I guess like a colloquial joint that people say is like, I'm not letting you live in my head rent free. For like, free. <laughs> like, what are you doing, bro? Like, so for me, it's like, I was, I'm, I was taught like, yo man, like forgiveness ain't about you. Like it isn't about them rather. It's about you. Mm. I'm not going to carry, if we think about it as um, energetic tension, right? Okay. If you think about yourself as sort of this ball of energy and you're, uh, you let your, you kind of let your energy go out to this person or thing that you like, don't want to forgive. You're going out your life with that little stick, like yeah. constantly. And it's just following you. And if we have enough of those, that energy doesn't belong to you. It's not yours anymore. You're just like kind of giving it away to all these little things. So for me, forgiving myself and forgiving them allows me to come back into dealing with myself. Because if you're, once again, if we're thinking about that thing, that wrong thing that happened, where are you not being right now? Right here. Like, but so, right. okay, so is the answer to spiritual journey mindfulness? <laughs> That's really interesting. I don't know if there's a, there's a, so much of an answer, but I, I think that, um, you know, mindfulness uh, as a construct, the thing is, we're, we're running into, we're coming into, I think, sort of the issue with with what you were pointing to earlier when you're talking about the gentrification of spirituality and which is to turn spirituality into an external concept that needs to be done. Mm. It needs to be, we got to do something. It's like the opposite of what it's meant to be. <laughs> it's a, it's really, yeah, I think it's really more so a non doing it's a peeling right. away of all the junk and, ah. and coming back to kind of a more natural, authentic state of yourself. Mm. Um, so I hesitate to say like, oh, it's is mindfulness. I think I think being, if that's a thing, is is gonna be better, uh, more helpful than than even turning it into a concept and even allowing the concept of being to melt into right now. Right. Uh, I think actually, I was literally I just recorded this video. Um, I think there is the temptation to turn presence into something that needs to be done. Oh uh, yeah. It's right, like, like oh, gotta fuck. be here now. It's just like all okay. the time as I can. It's like, I gotta be here, and it's like mm -mm. Uh, I do. I go on these hikes, and uh, one of my favorite things to do on my hike is to take a moment because I was noticing like I gotta get to the end of the waterfall to see the waterfall, and I gotta come back. And it's like I I went at a time where I knew there wouldn't be a lot of people there, and I just stopped. Just stop. We yeah. don't take any time to just stop and be with what's happening right now just yeah. and not even what's happening right just stop like yeah. oh like that's a well that's just a tree <laughs> and slowly but surely sort of everything sort of takes on this magical quality everything becomes yes. more magnificent right yes and i think that's that's something that's kind of if there's a practice that's kind of one of my favorite things to do is just like just be Let's yeah. let's work on that. I know that that's a little weird. A lot, no, no, that actually sounds a lot better than mindfulness because again, like 
mindfulness feel can sometimes feel forced. Like I'm not being mindful. Like oh shit, I caught myself like daydreaming a conversation. Like oh why why can't you pay attention more? Why and, and it can be a little bit self punishing. But like when you just said that thing about uh, hiking, like I went to go get my coffee across the street this morning, and I noticed just on the table that like the light was hitting it in a way that created this like beautiful prism rainbow. And I was like, look at that beautiful prism. I'm noticing a beautiful prism rainbow. I'm noticing that I'm happy about noticing a beautiful prism rainbow. And I just went like meta, 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 meta. Yes. And I was like, that made me, that like, not to condo, but like that sparked such a little piece of joy that I was like, okay, this is possible to do kind of like anytime, anywhere. And like when I think people talk about being able to manifest your own happiness, it seems like oh, you either have this spe special witch power or you mm -hmm. can pay a, a wellness coach to get it or that, like, you just don't, you aren't in the space and, like, you'll figure it out when something traumatic enough happens to you when it's like, oh, no, 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 no. You don't even have to have any of that. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have any of that. And you it don't. is just these little miracle-y moments. Yeah, I, I would also... Like, oh, shit. I'd also <laughs> say that, like, that, like that's just... Start making that the home base, right? Yeah. I think there's a temptation to go like, oh, that was this wonderful thing, and now I got to get back to that. Mm. It's like when it happens, it'd be like, oh, this is, oh, right, I'm back home. I'm back Ooh, to the way yeah. it is. So that starts conditioning yourself to just, because mm. it brings it back to like, oh, this is this is the way things are supposed to be. Like, this is the right. way things are. Yeah. I do want to talk about the awakening question, because I love I don't even remember what that. I asked, but yes. You asked about trauma. Oh, yes, and yes, yes. awakening. I, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm currently reading a book, and I, and I, and I hardcore want to plug it. It's called... Is uh, it The Body Keeps Score? No. Okay. <laughs> that's amazing. Like, that's the one I always hear about. <laughs> I, that's interesting. I, uh, hmm. That's actually interesting. I don't know how I feel about that book, but I'll check it out. Uh, what was the one you were going to say? Um, it's called The Leap by Stephen Taylor. Okay. And, gosh, I, I think it's... I think it's probably one of the most important books like that we're going to have. Oh. It's going to, I think it's going to sort of, if it's, it's already big. I mean, Eckhart Tolle did the, the intro. It's big. It's not something Whoa. small. I thought Eckhart Tolle was old. Is he, he still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. Oh, good for him. <laughs> <laughs> he's, still, he's, he's like, he's getting in the online space. He got hard uh, during uh -oh. the uh, quarantine. He's uh -oh. like uh -oh. up in his content. Like he's uh -oh. in YouTube and shit. Like He's got like a niece or a nephew or something for sure that's like <gasps> Uncle Tolle. You we got gotta it. Get <laughs> you will die out. You will die without the younger generation yeah. knowing your name. And they, it's it's been great, but I think the the leap is a great book. But within the book, he talks about um, specifically three different kinds of awakenings. Uh, the first being um, like a gradual awakening, okay. uh, sort of just sort of gradual over time, no, like not really doing much or anything else. Um, the other one is specifically speaks to the, the traumatic thing that you were talking about and the idea that uh, something sort of uh, breaks and it's right. like this spontaneous, like, yeah. whoa, like right. insanity. And that's the one I, I, I think a lot of us are going to probably <laughs> deal with the idea that these traumatic things, because I think for, for, for a lot of us, I can speak for myself definitely, mm -hmm. I was in such a sort of cage of, of ego uh mm. that was uh just it, it was so wrapped around me that when i and as an actor i would say it was super helpful because mm -hmm. i got to that that sort of point where you like uh i don't know why i did that uh where, yeah. <laughs> where you uh or i didn't have to didn't have to work for a while as an actor like sorry yeah. i have a day job i was just acting right yeah. so i was like oh i made it i did it we did the thing you call mom. Hey, mom. Yeah. Just not waiting tables today. Um, and like, I think Jim Carrey says it, like everybody tells you, but like when you, you feel like you did it and you're like, I'm not, I'm not happy. Yeah. Like, not even close. Not even a little bit. And I the was like. The mountaintop was not even a mountain. It was like a fucking. <laughs> yeah. It was like a, it, it was like a spoon. You're like, this wasn't even a mountain the whole time. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, dude. And, like, I was, and, and, and I think that is, um, I think that's one of the, the, the things that happens is we all have, we externally identify so hard. I'm my job. Mm -hmm. I'm my race. I'm my mm -hmm. age. I'm my, all mm -hmm. these things. And they form this sort of cage of beliefs 
that at some point, if you only know yourself in a relation to these things, Ooh. it's like, it, it, and I don't even think it's like a, I think it's a natural thing for you. You can't sustain that. It's like you've right. created a cake of made of only icing. Ooh, and it's going to collapse. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like my ideal cake. Just icing. It's just a tub of icing. But yeah, you, you can't sustain that. You're you so can't right. sustain that. And I think we all yeah. kind of hit that in one way or another. And I think it, that pendulum, I think that's a great, there's a, there's a hermetic, oh, uh, fuck it. Uh, there's this sort of hermetic idea uh, called the principle of rhythm. It's this esoteric mystical thing. But wow. one, of, one of the things they talk about is that the pendulum swings uh, kind of in the opposite direction proportionally to how far it was in the other way. Right, right. Like everything has a rhythm. And right. in that rhythm, a lot of people, if you're kind of sort of this sort of mm, whatever, when, you're, when you swing, when that trauma hits and you swing, you go to the other side and it's like... And Big, it's yeah. it's a blast of sort of this other thing. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the journey that we all are going to go on is being able to sort of reconcile being sort of human and tactile and being here, right. being your most authentic self while still realizing that it's not just about the stuff that we can experience with our right. senses. Whoa, that's deep. Because I, I was, I was going to... I'm going to attempt to go see we're at 45 minutes already. See, I try to keep these fucking things short that. for you guys audience, <laughs> but I'm sorry. It, it, this stuff interests me mostly because it scares me. And like, I try to understand that shit because I realized like with my mental health stuff, like the more I understood chemically what was happening, like say during a panic attack, I'm like, Oh, it, that's not really scary. It's just like my adrenal glands flushed. It's my adrenaline. Like, you know, I was able to, to logic into it. And mm -hmm. this kind of conversation sometimes feels like I can't logic into it. And I'm a very emotional person, actually. Oh, like, I'm Leo good. double Gemini, so I'm, like, just emotions. Yeah. So, <laughs> poor, my poor partner. But, like, I'm going to try and attempt to, to have this conversation. But is there, you know, you had said something, like, if you're only able to identify with those kind of um, things that are very, like, materialistic, like our age or race or, or like, m monetary value or our job or whatever, our bank account... Like, is the step beyond that, be, besides our authentic selves, then, like, each other? Like, I know there's not a goal, but, like, what else is there to kind of, like, expand yourself into? <laughs> I, I tried. No, no, that's, that's amazing. I, uh, I, would, I would say that... Experientially, uh, I think we will all, at some point, maybe in another life, we will all at some point realize that you are kind of everything. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's... The expansion is into... I would say, first, it's, it's sort of an inwardness going. I think understanding the architecture of this unseen inward at times very illogical universe connects us to the expansion of knowing that you are everything mm. that there's like not a there's not really a separation it's really kind of all in perception and i think okay I think uh, one of the, the Tao Te Ching talks about this, uh, the first like sort of verse in it is the Tao that can be described is not the enduring and unchanging Tao. The, the name that can be named is not the enduring and unchanging name. Uh, what the fuck is the Tao? The Tao. It's like this idea. Well, see, it's this, well, you can call it like the God or the universe or whatever, but uh, it's, it's just this kind of, it, well, that's just it, right? We're talking about what it is, what we're talking about. And it's like, it points to also the Judeo-Christian idea of God, which is, uh, it's pronounced Yahweh, which is I am. Uh -huh. It points to a state of being, an indescribable mm -hmm. beingness. So anytime we try to go, this is the thing. This is the whole thing, right? I got it. Yeah. It's already, you've already it's shrunk already, in. Yeah. You've already shrunk in it to this thing. So I think... 
beginning to become okay with being, the nature of being uh, connects us to everything in a very expansive way. Like you can say, even from a condo perspective, right? You mentioned that, like having that sort of respect for everything mm-hmm. in your life, right? That mm-hmm. sort of mm-hmm. begins to extend to to people, to mm-hmm. stuff. And and you see that sort of reflection in, I mean, I can see the, re- the reflection of the care that you take in your life right behind mm-hmm. you right now. Mm-hmm. I can see Kelsey everywhere, mm-hmm. right? It's, right. It's, it's beautiful and it's a direct sort of reflection of your isness. So it's, I think, mm. yeah, I think going in and, and becoming curious about that internal architecture will manifest mm-hmm. as how you relate to everything. Yeah, and that then goes into the, like, the, the, the idea of like time, right? Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that is like a clusterfuck of trying to understand then like what is this purpose on this life like are we experiencing consciousness in this life because it is like why this one over other ones I guess Mm -hmm. so what do you think happens when we die (laughs) I get that all the time (laughs) do you yeah in my lives people are like what what happens when you die what happens when you die what do you say I say almost like uh Routinely, I always say like, I, I don't care. Uh, not that, not that I don't care, but not that you don't care, but not like that I, it's not, gonna happen. Not that I don't care, but I got too much shit to do right now. Mm. Like I get mm. like that sort of idea of like what happens when you die. Then it's like I don't. You're already putting it in the future, which you're is like already the, putting not the it point. in the future. It's already this thing that's like. You know what? And and honestly, if we had three hours, we could talk about past lives, right? And fucking, right. Yeah, and reincarnate yeah. all that. Time I, is a circle. A yeah. circle. Um, but I I I prefer to deal with what's happening now. I am I actually naturally sort of lean in that sort of woo woo mystical weird mm-hmm. direction. Uh, mm-hmm. personally, right? I thank God have surrounded myself with either consciously or unconsciously with people who are incredibly grounded. Like my, mm. all of my teachers, my, my fiance is like the exact opposite of me. So she's wow. very like very grounded in this reality and things like that. All of my teachers, like one of my teachers, she's like did Buddhism for like a little bit and she's like, nah, I got this. Like all <laughs> they're very grounded. So yeah. it keeps me dealing with what is. Cause if left to my own devices, I'll be talking about Syrian star seed weird <laughs> shit for days. But I think that the, like, I, okay, I'm going to attempt to wrap up cause we're at 52 minutes now. For sure. But like, I think what you're talking about there, like this idea of going too woo woo off the handle can lead to, and I don't know if you really believe in this term, but like a spiritual emergency where yes. like I've, you know, in my life, had a a lot of intimacy with people who have experienced spiritual emergency and like Mm -hmm. uh, even understanding that that's what that word was where um it's almost like an overload yeah uh it's Uh, it's too much it's it's uh, an overload of like consciousness or expanding there's a there a dune is coming out pretty soon uh with timothy with timothy chalamet Oh, <laughs> heaven. Right. Um, he's just great. Uh, but there, in that, there's this spiritual sort of awakening that he has where he turns into the Quisark Sadarach. And it's like this idea sure. that he gets all these consciousnesses with him at once. And he has access okay. to them all the time. It's too much. It drives him crazy. And mm. uh, I would recommend to anybody, see, once again, like demystifying spirituality, anybody that is sort of or has experienced a spiritual emergency, mm-hmm. read the Dune trilogy, the first three books. Wow. They they explore this idea because it, it goes even deeper into like he has kids who are like seven with access to this stuff. So the kids like seven going on 700. And Fuck. I've pers- personally experienced those things where I've had mm. those days where it was just like the universe is getting pressed into your mind. Right, right. And you really can't. And it, and it feels overwhelming. I will say once again, back to like 
the grounding forces right. that are in my life. And I, and yes. And I think like, so th sorry to cut you off, but like, I no. think that that's where support in this kind of situation is so important because I do think someone that can say like, dog, go do your fucking thing. Go dance in the fucking stars for all I give a shit. Snort the clouds, like go for it. I want you to be the best self, but having someone to be like, Unfortunately, we live in a society where you have to have a job and make money and you have to abide stuff. by certain like social norms and, da, 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 and like you can't take your clothes off and like dance in fire. Like we have mm -hmm. to come back here to mm -hmm. grounding. Um, I don't know if like that's maybe I got too um, esoteric in the in the way that I described what exactly that is. But um, no, I think that was I think that was exactly spot on. I, I got so I had such a. I, and this is sort of later in my journey. I had such a spiritual emergency one time that I literally never seen a psychic in my life. I was like, I got to go see somebody. Because mm. I was like, this was, I, I, I dipped into that realm of like, this may be a psychosis thing. I already had, right. like, I knew, I knew it wasn't that. But like, I just, I was like, I need to speak to somebody. Oh, great. Who could, and I'd never seen a psychic. But I went and pretty much she gave me a reading that was exactly what happened to me. <laughs> Wow. So I was like, so she's like, you're Great. good. <laughs> Just you're good. You're good. You're fine. You 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 already know what's what the deal is because I wow, gave her a pretty that's comforting. Yeah, well, I gave her a pretty lengthy explanation about like what I thought was happening, and she's like, yeah, mm -hmm. just go back and be fine. But I just wanted to make like I just sometimes you just need that little extra to be like reassurance you, or validation or exactly. And I confidence. and I and I definitely kind of you needed that that day so yeah I, i'd say yeah. definitely reach out if you're feeling a little overwhelmed because it can yeah be. yeah and i think like no you know noticing that like mm -hmm. i think what happened to me was i ex not personally but like i saw all of that all of that and i went okay any of this deep dive is dangerous now because i've seen where it's overtaken and become and controlled and i'm like Okay, nope, we just cut everything off like crystals out of the house. Fucking anything out of the house. We're out of the house. For sure. Uh, and then now, you know, as I'm becoming more in tune, like I joke that like my friend who just moved into our apartment complex is a witch. And I, like I always joke like her shit's rubbing off on me. But really, I think like I'm just starting to really become in a place where I can awaken to that um, that stuff that is inside of me that I'm like slowly dipping my toes back into the water and like maybe to round out this whole conversation, that's what I really like about your TikToks is that like you make it digestible, you make it relatable and you're not afraid to also sprinkle in this stuff that's like maybe people might look at and go like, oh wait, I don't get that one. That one was too fucking left field or like that was mm -hmm. too weird. But like, let me Google what he just said or like, let me just like, Get, get curious as like you know my and your mantras apparently seem to be like hey. spoiler alert that's kind of like it for everything is like it's curious how to get to a non-judgmental place so um wow okay i really didn't mean to talk for this long but i could keep we could keep going we could, we for a hot this. minute You're right. yeah but um <laughs> i would love for you to tell people how they can uh hear more about what you have to say and I know like you're not here to teach people how to find their spiritual journey but I think even just like giving a little bit of something for people to go like oh that that speaks to me I want more tell us uh <laughs> okay uh well uh, yeah obviously find me you can find me on TikTok and Instagram as motivational speaker uh YouTube's coming uh I'll be fun uh -oh. explore some other content be able to put people in touch with resources that I think are helpful which That's will be fun really important. Uh, but overall, man, for, you know, and I think to simplify the whole thing for me, because there's a lot of junk out there, there's a lot of stuff. Mm. Um, I like to just remember it's like my imaginal experience gives life to all of it. Like before the crystal works, why does the crystal work? You imagined that it did, right? You right. have to imagine it all sort of, it's going to be coming back to you. It's wow. all about that internal experience subjective experience and becoming curious as to what that looks like for you there's going to be a lot of people saying this is the thing this is the thing but i think becoming curious as to what your intuition leads you to mm. 
and exploring that uh, I think is probably one of the most helpful things you can do for yourself because that's gonna keep trust doing your it. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. I feel like that's like the basis of all things. Like you have an gut. amazing voice. What was that? <laughs> like, are we? What are we? I'm just fucking with you. I told you I love musical theater. Uh, uh, but David, thank you so much. You're so rad. I know we're gonna stay in touch now and. I know you live in LA and it doesn't matter because of the quarantine, but when things are lifted, we are going to have to do this again in person and go do a bunch of weird, witchy crystal shopping or some shit. That totally. Would be, and that would be a cool Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, David, yeah. thanks so much. Thanks for being on here, Confidants. We will see you next week. <laughs>